Hey pals, welcome to the next logical step in my midlife crisis. Now, when I received my Christmas bonus about six weeks ago, uh, I was determined to treat myself to something I want rather than something I need. And I thought back to some of the games and toys I never had as a kid. And two things kept uh, popping up in my head, uh, model railroading and slot car racing. I never had a slot car track and I never had a train set when I was a kid. And um, the reason for that, it was they were always too expensive. Well, that certainly has not changed. Uh, just a quick cursory glance into model railroading. Uh, even a starter set is incredibly expensive. And the same is true for slot car racing. Even the different scales. One of the things I discovered is that the smaller scale uh, slot car tracks aren't that much less expensive than the larger scale ones. Now, there is some stuff on the low end, but that's all hot garbage. And that's true for model railroading as well. But then I began to explore the hobby of digital uh, slot car racing. And very quickly discovered that uh, that's also extortionately uh, expensive, more so than analog uh, slot car racing, but not by that much. And that was the deciding factor here. Now, uh, after six weeks, I sort of despaired. I was like, I can't find any good deals on any of these uh, Carrera or Scalextric uh, sets, and uh, I was about to write write this off, but then uh, a deal popped up that I couldn't refuse. Uh, now, this uh, set, this Spirit of Speed uh, 132 scale set, uh, just to put this into perspective for you chappies, uh, this retails, the manufacturer's suggested retail price for this box full of stuff, 600 US dollars. Uh, that's outrageous, wouldn't you agree? And now, the uh, price sticker on this particular unit indicates that the previous owner of this set paid 400 for it. I paid far less, and the reason for that is uh, the uh, previous owner uh, received this for Christmas, uh, opened it up, laid it out, played with it one time, and his wife said, nope, get that out of here. And now with the box in hand, I can certainly see why. I mean, this thing... Is way bigger than I thought it was going to be, giggity. And I'm not even sure where I'm going to store this uh, box that everything comes in because uh, I will have to tear this down and put it all back in the box when I'm not playing with it. But the value here is this particular set is one of the more expensive ones because it comes with three slot cars rather than two. And it has around 26 feet of track inside. Uh, most of them average from 18 to 20 feet. Um... And they're not that much less expensive. Now, right now, you can find some of these smaller sets for around $350. I paid less than that for this. And uh, it's got more track and more cars uh, used one time. Uh, so, with fingers crossed, we can treat that as like new. Now, there is a Carrera Digital Starter Set. And it's called the Starter Set. It's got about 15 feet of track in it and two cars. I think they're... Mustangs, GT Mustangs, uh, but that starter set is only available in Germany, and after you uh, pay the extortionate shipping cost to get it to the United States, uh, it would have ended up costing more than I paid for this, with only 15 feet of track and only two cars. So, regardless of what happens next, I got a good deal on this, uh, fingers crossed, assuming it works properly, and we are dealing with uh, I'm not going to call it computer technology, but they do call it digital uh, technology. It's essentially Radio Shack technology, uh, to put it bluntly. Um, I'll explain this very quickly, then I want to open this up and have a look at it. Um, the old slot car sets produced since 1930 uh, are regarded today as analog sets. Basically, your cars have to stay in their own lane and, and race around. Um, using a, a controller with a, either a trigger or a plunger or something on it that varies the speed. Of the, it runs off an electrical current, just very similar to a model train set, okay? And, um, well, the digital comes into play because each of the cars that come with this has a, a little microchip inside that has a sensor built in. Uh, and there's, uh, you can see it outlined in red on the box, their lane switching technology. You don't have to stay in the inner or outer lane on this thing. You can switch back and forth during a race. Um, you can also control the overall maximum speed of each individual car. And this is what appealed to me. 
Uh, you can program the cars to drive themselves. Uh, they call them ghost cars in this particular hobby. Now, there's further features that I won't be able to take advantage of because these sets don't come with the pit lane add-on, and they should. They, I really think they should uh, because one of the selling points of the digital system is that you can simulate running out of fuel and having to slide into pit lane to refuel. Uh, that's part of the technology that's built into this system, but you can't take advantage of it until you go out and spend another $100 or so on the pit lane uh, that adds on to the track. Now, before we open it, I want to go hands-free or hands-on with the uh, camera here and just have a good look at the box and some of the things it says. Now, I can't stress enough how large this box is, and it's also very deep. It weighs 25 pounds, the box does. So this is a Carrera Digital 132 Spirit of Speed set. These uh, came on the scene about three years ago. It's not the latest and greatest, uh, but the track this comes with is... The same setup, the same layout that comes with a lot of these other sets. It's uh, 8 meters, and that's about 26, a little over 26 feet. It does come with three slot cars, 132 scale. And let's see, that's obviously Corvette, that's an Aston Martin, and that's a Porsche. And that's good for me because um, I'm more drawn toward European racing than NASCAR. So uh, I recognize all three of these cars simply from watching Top Gear. So... <laughs> That works out for me. Now, let's get this out of the way right away. It says, Caution Electric Toy. Zooming in on the word toy. This is a toy. This is not anything but a toy. No matter what anyone in the slot car community says, this is a gigantic toy on this table right now. Okay? Now that that's out of the way, uh, we can look at some of the... Uh, there's the lane-changing feature shown on this. That's cool. And uh, it says you can run up to six drivers on this. Now, this only comes with three controllers, I think. I don't have need for six controllers. I only have need for one controller, sure, uh, but for my own purposes. But um, what we'll do now, I think, is flip over the box so we can look at some of the uh, features on the back. <laughs> that was not an easy feat. Okay, so we've got three different languages in play here. Uh, it says up to six cars at the same time. Let's look at what the controller will look like. Wireless controller. Uh, this does not have a wireless. Uh, there's no way it's wireless. I'm pretty sure it's wired. Um, cars with light funk. Yeah, all the cars do have headlights and tail lights that light up. Uh, customizable settings for each individual car. Speed, braking power, fuel level. Of course, we can't take advantage of fuel level without the pit lane add-on, and there's an example of it. This does not come with it. Uh, ghost and safety car function. Yeah, I talked about that a little. Uh, extra bright sheen. Oh, sorry. Extra wide tracks. Uh, this is technically a 124 scale track, but it accommodates the 132 scale cars. And if I had 124 scale cars on this track, I'd want to get some of these shoulder add-ons so that they could drift. Um, now this is just showing some of the other things that are available. That's the wireless system. I'm positive this is actually wired okay there's a double there's the lap or the uh, position tower that's an add-on it does not come with this it's very expensive uh, the uh, digital driver display that does not come with this that's an add-on it's very expensive the uh, digital lap counter that does not come with this it's very expensive the a starlight, that says stop, 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 go, and that starts the race. I don't need that. That's built into the side of the brain. That's very expensive. Uh, this kind of stuff, add-ons, it's pricey. There's the uh, the pit lane. That's very expensive, about 100 bucks for a pit lane. And shoulder add-ons for the track. It's all expensive, chappies. It's all very expensive. I figure with 26 feet of track in my little room here, that's going to be more than plenty. I probably won't even be able to use it all. There is a, a free app, but the uh, slot car community favor, at least the Carrera slot car community favors an app that costs around 15 bucks. I think it's called Smart Race. I'm going to try this first. But in order to take advantage of that, you've got to get the Carrera App Connect Bluetooth add on device. Does not come with this. It's about 40 bucks. That's very expensive, in my opinion. Okay? Here's some of the different track you can get. It doesn't come with this. That's a, a lane change to the left or to the right, depending on which way it's oriented. That, there's one of these, I think, in the uh, set here uh, that will allow you to change either lane. And there's different lane changing options. 
including on a curve. I don't know how su successful I'd be with that. Remember, I've never played with a slot car set in my entire life, so uh, we're going to have to take it slow to begin with. Here's a hairpin. Uh, what's it called? Well, it's called an Engstelle, uh, but what's it called? A narrow section, okay. All right, so I think we're ready to open this box, which is going to require me to flip it back over, pal. Okay, I have cut all the tape around all sides of the box. And now to the seller's credit, uh, this was packaged extremely well. And so uh, that's good news. Hopefully it works. Uh, again, this is technically used, practically new, but technically used, okay? And, uh, well, here we go. I may have to approach this from the rear, giggity. And see how we're going to do this. Now, this box does have a handle on the top, so I think what we'll do is just, look how big the box is. This is insane, and this is going to be a logistical issue, just keeping this stored when not in use, but, okay, so we got, okay, so I guess the first thing I want to have a look at is the card themselves to see just how many times he took these around the track if I can even ascertain that it looks like okay I want to start with the Corvette and get a good look at that beautiful paint job or whatever they call it livery Note the driver on the inside. That's really sweet. So I'll give you an idea of the scale. It's about as big as my hand. This is larger than a Hot Wheels car, uh, smaller than the old action racing and winter's circle cars. So that's how you keep it powered up on the uh, course, on the track. These little braids, and I'll have to read up on how to properly align those. Uh, this does have magnets in it to help it stay on the track. A lot of people take the magnets out so that they can do fast and furious drifting with it. Um, it looks all right to me. Uh, we won't know till we put it on the track. Doesn't look like he's done any work on the tires. That's probably just a good thing. So basically, this blade, the guide blade, goes down into the groove on the track. And then these little... Uh, metal braids, it's just a bunch of metal wires really, uh, make contact with the uh, metal parts of the track. I think it's stainless steel with Carrera. And uh, the electrical current turns the uh, little toy motor inside that turns the back wheels, the rear wheels. Uh, other slot cars it may be front wheels, who knows. But um, at some point I will have to unscrew this and you know do maintenance on this. You know, hair and dust and stuff get in there. And I want to oil the axles, or at least the bushings, or the bearings, depending on who you ask. And we'll look into that. It's a real nice. This is a, I think this is a C, CR7. And, uh, again, what little I know about this kind of stuff, I absorb from watching Top Gear. So it says somewhere on the box what this is. Uh, so i probably take the antennas out, and probably also the spoiler, because... Uh, this stuff gets broken on slot cars. If, if you're not careful, uh, you can you can break these. And the mirrors probably take those off as well. And uh, to, just to avoid damaging uh, the peripherals, it's a it's a really cool. Notwithstanding the fact that it's a got a motor in it and it's an electric toy, it's a neat display piece. And I'm sure there's folks out there that collect these just for that. Okay, so. That's the Corvette. It looks good. Okay. And now I think the blue one is an Aston Martin. Okay. The heart of racing is the livery. Is that the correct word, I believe? So the antennas are intact. The spoiler is intact. Mirrors are okay on this. Uh, there's a little driver in there. And, uh, looks good. Okay. And, uh, this looks a little different on the back. It's, it's got the 
plate on the back here. And now we'll, it looks like he fooled with this one too much. See how the braids down here are not worn at all? Um, looks like he may have only run the Corvette. Well, we'll look at the Porsche here in a minute. But these have got to flip up as well to make contact with the track. I know that. And yeah, there's a magnet in there somewhere. I think that might be a magnet. And that's the sensor, the digital sensor. And there's an on-off switch on that. If this doesn't work, I'll, okay, so this tells us here on the bottom exactly what it is. Aston Martin Vantage GT3. And looks good. All right, now we'll have a quick look at the Porsche. It's pink, and it's supposed to be pink. They call this a pink pig. Based off another car that had this same paint job, or livery. And, uh, yep, looks like he may have had a spill. Looks like the antenna got bent a little bit on this one, so. Not, that's, that's not a deal breaker, Chappie. There's the driver on the inside. And, yeah, I'm probably going to take the spoiler off all of these. Uh, I don't think the spoiler has much of a function on these anyway. Now, in a real car, you'd need this to keep the ass in on the, on the, uh, the, 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 uh, the pavement, but, um, keep it from spinning out with you, but I don't know if it has that much of an impact on a toy slot car. Oh, no, he ran this one, too. Okay, oh, and this one's dirty. Look at that. I have to get a toothbrush out before I even run this one and clean that, and I've got some stuff. I picked up some stuff that will not only clean the braids, but also the, uh, bearings or bushings and the uh the gear on the inside keep everything well maintained we'll talk about that at a later time um i'm not going to recommend it to anyone because everyone in this hobby has their own oil and grease or whatever they use for everything but um like i said uh, oh he's got the okay cool good attention to detail on these for the price these i mean individually these cars would cost about 70 bucks a piece depending on where you get them you might get them for less than that but um, that's one of the reasons this was such a good deal, because uh, there's over $200 worth of cars included with this. Uh, all right. Well, please, not a lot of heavy wear on the tires. He didn't, he certainly didn't sand these down. Now, whether I'm going to do that or not, I don't know. Um, I don't know how deep I want to get into the cut, to the uh, tune-up phase of this early on. First thing I want to do is make sure they work. Okay, so there are the three vehicles that this particular set comes with. Most of these sets only come with two. Uh, so again, that was another reason that I was happy with this uh, deal. All right, here's one of the controllers. And so it's sort of like an old Cat, Cat 10 or Cat 5, what is it, Cat 10 cable? Like landline cable. I mean, this is... This is Radio Shack technology here, pals. And we've got like an old rotary phone uh, cord. So you go, you speed up by pushing on the gas here with your thumb. And that's the lane change button as far as I know. And you can do other things with that. Uh, most of the people involved in this hobby say immediately say, go out and buy a better controller than this. And my thought on that is if this is not adequate, then they shouldn't be charging so much for these things. Uh, if this is not adequate, then why are they selling them? Okay? And, uh, you know, this is not the only dog in the race. Uh, Sca uh, Scalextric is the uh, slot car manufacturer most well-known in, I'm going to say Europe, but probably not all of Europe. Certainly England and maybe English-speaking uh, parts of Europe. Uh, Carrera seems to be more popular, in certainly in Germany and Austria. I think their company is located in Austria and uh, in the United States. Uh, Scalextric and Carrera Digital are not compatible with each other. Now, analog to digital, you've got some expensive ways to make that work. Uh, very expensive ways. Um, analog, some analog slot cars will have a, a place in them that you can install one of the uh, digital chips that allow them to run on a Carrera track. Not all of them do. And it's not always to tell which is which. You have to do homework and research, and that's, that's a bummer. Okay, so there's three controllers in here, so I've, technically I've got two backup controllers. So I'll look at it that way. Oh, and the, the, they're color-coded. A yellow top, a red top, and a blue top. That would be helpful. I can, if I wanted to, I could assign each of these a different controller. Uh, what next? I don't know. I don't know where to start here. 
this looks like it might be the brains. Oh my. Nope, not the brains. It's the plug, and I have to say I don't like the way he wrapped that. Uh, that's not good for the cord wrapping it that way. I won't be doing that. Uh, but this plugs into an outlet. See, this is what electric football sets should come with, a transformer that big. Um, but they don't. All right. Okay. It may have come that way, but I doubt it. Highly doubt it. So, and it does say toy transformer. So let's get any illusions out of our head of this being anything other than a really expensive toy. Okay. Look how big that track is. I think I may have overestimated or underestimated how much space this is going to take up. Now, scale extra track is less less wide. It's more narrow. Uh, but this is regarded as better track because, well, for several reasons. It's it's not it's much more robust plastic. It's not flimsy like scale extra track. It has these particular pin connectors for the uh, electrical circuit. I am going to have to clean this. Uh, it does have the lines down the middle, that's not a big deal. And the big thing that people cite is that the uh, uh, the conductors here are stainless steel and it won't rust, and that is not correct. Stainless steel absolutely will rust, but I take it it won't rust as readily. Oh man, and this is a tight turn too, isn't it? Uh, I may have overestimated I mean, this is only supposed to take up like a 10 foot by 5 foot pr footprint, but I don't see how with track that large. So, And there's several pieces of that in here. Um, let's see. Okay, well, we got styrofoam. Oh. Well, here is the Digital 132 textbook. Uh, I assume this is in several different languages. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've even got uh, Mandarin and Cantonese in there, it looks like. So, uh, okay, montage un... Oh, I can't even say that. That's a, I believe that's a German word. It might be Dutch. Assembly and operating strip. So from 8 to 14 is all I got to be concerned with. Okay, that's a relief. And this looks like a... This is just the contents of the package. There's the track setup. Oh, and there's two alternate track setups they recommend. We'll have a look at those. Now I'm a little, I'm a little trepidatious about the uh, overpass, especially with really expensive cars like this, because if they fall, I mean they could potentially break. Uh, and here are the uh, things that you use to support the track when you're doing an overpass. Oh, it's got a ball socket joint. So it has a little give to it, okay. I wasn't expecting that. What is this? Now these are just the little pieces to put on the side of the brain. I still haven't found the brain yet. Uh, okay. All these connecting pieces I think are for the barricades. And potentially, oh these, these hold the track together. Okay. That's a relief to have those, and ah, this is very appreciated. Spare parts. We've got spare braids in here. We've got spare mirrors when those break, and looks like spare antenna when those break, but no spare spoilers. So, well, this is all going in my toolbox. In fact, I'm going to put it there right now. Okay, hopefully we won't need this anytime soon, but if, it does, if I do, I've got it. Okay, next... This appears to just be a brochure, a catalog. This would be from 2021. Uh, I'll need to view that at my own lazier. Okay, it says Boxenstopp. Wir gratulieren Ihnen zum Kauf Ihres neuen Carrera Produkt. Oh, and here it is in English. Okay, very good. So I can read that at my leisure as well. These are certainly the, uh, that's pretty firm plastic, kind of dirty too, so yeah, he's definitely smacked into these several times. Uh, maybe I can clean these with something, um, maybe just soap and water, 
these are the barriers, the barricades to, uh, yeah, he's certainly scuffed these up, but he disclosed that in the listing, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, these are to keep the cars from flying off the tracks, and hopefully they work. Uh, fingers crossed there. Here's some larger... I wonder if you're supposed to cut this to spec or something. Uh, or if this is just one long barrier. We'll find that out in due course, okay? This is going to take me probably a couple days to get up and running. Uh, the only thing I have not seen that I really want to see is the central processing unit, or the brain. Let's look under the cars. I don't think they're in there. Now surely... Well, let me say this. Um, there's still all this track here to look under. In fact, let's pop this up and see what's... There it is. Okay. Oh, jeez, all this styrofoam. I'm never going to get this back in here the way it was in here. Uh, well, we've got a stack of straight track. To the, it's too heavy for me to lift in one go. So, and there's styrofoam everywhere. And that's going to be a problem with the track, all this styrofoam. But there's just some straight track. And as you can see, oh, man. I may end up having to just make a tiny little oval on my floor here. I did not anticipate it would be this big. Um, and I did measurements. So that's on me, but nonetheless. And now I've run out of room. So we're going to put these over on the bed. Another logistical consideration is how loud is this going to be in operation. That will limit when I can play with this. Uh, if it's too loud. If it's louder than an electric football motor, well, I may be very limited. And when I can... Uh... You're going to have to clean this every time you unpack it because of all the styrofoam that comes loose. Oh, jeez. Look at the central brain. That's impressive. If nothing else. Okay, so yeah, this table is definitely going to have to come down when I'm playing with this. This all appears to be one piece. Okay. So here's the start and finish line. And that transformer cord plugs into this unit. Now underneath here, you can see all kinds of peripheral ports. One for the lap counter add-on. PC unit, I'll have to look into that. Tower 1, Tower 2. I think these are the controllers, actually. And we've got functionality for speed, brakes, fuel, which I can't take advantage of fuel without the, uh, lap, or the uh, pit lane. And code, that's important. That's to uh, pair up the slot cars with individual commands. Pace car, sound on off, and this starts the race, it looks like. We have to keep fuel turned off for now, and this powers the whole unit. There's five lights here that help you know when to start the race. And they also, if it, it's blinking, that means one. If it's solid, that means two. Blinking three, solid four. Blinking, I think that's right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how it works, yeah. So the track looks to be in really, really good shape. The barriers have taken a, a licking from... And driving the cars too fast, it looks like. And uh, so far, I have no um, worries about the quality and about the uh, shape of, of what we're uh, dealing with. This will have to be cleaned and just get all this styrofoam off it because that's going to wreak havoc on connectivity if I don't. And the biggest two issues now are space and storage. Uh, I'm going to have to put all this back in here when I'm not playing with it. And I'm not sure I can lay down all 26 feet of this track in my floor in here. I may have to get very creative with a layout in order to accommodate it. I planned for 10, 10 feet, 10 and a half feet by 5 feet. And that's what the specs say that I can do with this, but we're just going to have to see. Okay, well, that's uh, what I wanted to achieve with this unboxing. That's our first look at the Carrera Digital. Uh, this is the Spirit of Speed set. Um, all these sets are similar, 
Some of them come with more cars than others, or fewer cars than others, and some come with more track or, or less track uh, than others. Again, the best deal for a starter set is only available in Germany. Um, otherwise, there really is no good deal new. Um, I, I hate to encourage folks to go out and buy used because you never know what you're buying. You, sometimes you're just buying someone else's problem. Uh, it did take me six weeks of looking to finally pull the trigger on this purchase, on this particular purchase. So uh, let the buyer beware in that regard. But stay tuned. We'll get it down. I've also got uh, on the way a, uh, a one-foot-tall tripod for the camera so that we can uh, uh, have an, an alternate view of the track rather than me just holding the camera while I play with the uh, game here, okay? And that's what it is, folks. This is a game. This is a toy. It's a game. It's not a way of life. It's not a... A professional sport, the way some slot car racers treat it as. Um, this is an extortionately expensive toy. And I can't wait to try it out. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.